your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me Hello everyone, welcome to the show. Well, I'm really excited today because I have a husband and wife who work well together, which I think is not something that's uh, easily done. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So there you go. <laughs> I'm Phil LaRondell. I have a traditional Indian name, Machasco Sis, which means the swallow. And I'm Giselle LaRondell. And I have Blue Heartstone Flicker Woman. Say that again. Blue Heartstone Flicker Woman, oh, my okay. spirit name. Very nice, yeah. Um, now, the two of you work together, as I said at the top of the show. Um, you do uh, teachings, correct? Teachings and workshops, yes. Okay, so let's talk about the teachings first. Oh, first of all, how did, how did you two uh, decide to work together on any of these things? Well, I was doing this kind of work uh, when we met. I, I teach about the medicine wheel. I was running talking circles and sweat lodges and that. Uh, we met uh, in the late 90s, and then we got married in 2000. We'd both been married before, and uh, we both come from our own backgrounds. And my dad was Cree, met my mom in wartime in England, and you can say a little bit about I'm, that. I'm Acadian from New Brunswick, French Acadian, and my mom has some Mi'kmaq ancestry on her background a few generations back. And when I met Phil, we actually met at a meditation practice that we used to do weekly. And when we met and I started going to the circles and to the ceremonies and it reached something inside me that was really deep and it felt like coming home. Mm -hmm. And it, I realized at the time I didn't know I had some, some ancestry and then I discovered it after. And then when we started doing workshops together, I, I'm a very crafty person. So when we started doing workshops together, he realized that I was a lot, it was easier for me than it was for him because for him, it was mostly the people connection and me, it's the craft and the organization and, and setting up workshops and organizing, you know, sessions and things, things like that. And he does the teaching so that we are a really, really good team you know in that part my skills are needed and and the skills that he doesn't have like you know because his skills are mostly people and he's very good at that at assessing people and doing the teachings so we made a good team that way so we decided to team up and and do it together I think that's awesome you know it's interesting because I, I interviewed another a husband and wife that work together but she doesn't like to be on camera you know, oh. so it's, but she sets up the, you know, he's a performer and she sets up the, uh, uh, lines up the gigs for him, right? So it's, it's really fascinating how it, it can work or not work in your favor. Uh, now some of the teachings that you, um, this is Phil, you teach, um, all my prayer, all my relations prayer, correct? Teachings. That's the name of our company. All my that's relations. the name of the company. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. So what does that mean exactly? Because I've heard that term before, all my relations. Yeah, so when I say all my relations, we have like a, a prayer that we say, it's like eight different things. If you count it on your hand, we say we count the two leggeds like, like us and primates. Then we say four leggeds and maybe some people in, in your audience, you know, when I say four leggeds, maybe a four legged animal appears right. to you. And of course, people have cats and dogs. And then we say the ones that fly. Like when a, a certain bird that maybe you're attracted to. My last name, Machesco Cease, means the swallow. The ones that fly, the ones that swim. And uh, on the West Coast where we are, like the, the native people have songs for all the marine life. And, and uh, little children would say, well, we used to be swimmers in our, inside of our mother. Mm -hmm. The ones that crawl. So it's, this is still meaning all my relations. So, it, you know, the insects and earthworms and that. Right. Uh, the, rock, the rock people, which means ordinary rocks, but mountains as well. We call them the old timers, uh, the, the rock people. And the rooted nations. And again, you'll have a tree or a flower that's that's similar to your spirit. And then the last one is the star nation, the eighth, the eighth one. So when we say all my relations, it means the two-leggeds, the four-leggeds, the ones that fly, the ones that swim, the ones that crawl, 
the rock people, the rooted nations and the star nations. And of course, there's stuff in between all that mm -hmm. that our senses don't perceive. So when we say all my relations, we're just saying we're related to all of that. So what, what we do and say affects that. And what happens to that, of course, affects us. If, right. if, uh, if we didn't have some of the elements, for example, of that would affect us. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. So um, now in the in the teachings or that that you do, which is separate from your workshops, correct? Yes. So, OK, so what 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 are the teachings? And then we'll talk about what the workshops are. Well, the, no, the workshops and the teachings, they go hand in hand. Like oh, they, we teach, OK, we do teach about the medicine wheel, for example, where we we go with very deep into we think of the four directions on the medicine wheel. We say spring, summer, fall, winter. But then we say body, mind, emotion, and spirit. And that's where it gets into more of a, a workshop. And we do some healing work with people as, as well. When we talk about all the things that happen to our physical. And we go in depth with that. And then, of course, the mental. And and it, did, it does get also into meditation. When we say mental, we also talk about how do you shut this thing off? You know, yeah. how, can you, how can you be still? And, and how can you receive and, and give? easily and effortlessly so body mind emotion is a big one because you know how to get emotions out in a clean and clear way that doesn't get you stuck and most people that have experienced trauma though they get stuck somewhere you know and so that, that's some of the healing work we do the way the elders have taught Giselle and I they they say we undo the knot in a soft and kind and gentle way when it comes to trauma and then we go to the spiritual again, which comes into that all my relations prayer. So those are the kind of teachings we, we get deep into. I do a lot of teachings about animal symbols and the meanings of them and mm -hmm. how to interpret some things. And, and and Giselle, you know, she really does go into the, the craft part of when we're drum making, for example, like she's very meticulous on how everything goes. And we give, she does, she teaches about protocols about the drum. Maybe you want to. Yes. When we do workshops, we talk about how to look after your medicine because a, a drum is a medicine, a drum, a rattle, anything. We call it a medicine because a person uses it for their own well-being and as well as, as you know, for others as well. So we teach them how to take care of their medicine. You know, there's a protocol, you know, how to carry it, how to carry yourself while, when you're holding your drum. You know, no drugs, no alcohol in your body. You have to be make sure that you know you're pure yeah. at heart and 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 in body as well, because it's all part of the same thing. And mm -hmm. then we do we we do the after that once we finish the workshop, then we do an hour or two of, of protocol and and teaching them how to use their drum, how to sing the drum beats, the different drum beats. <clears throat> we do the same thing with rattles. I do rattle making workshops as well. Dreamcatcher, anything that that is, mm -hmm. is needed in 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 the community, right. and it's very important right now because since everything has become so much more upfront now after the discovery of the children, I want it's nice to be part of bringing the teachings back to those who have lost them. Right. You know, they want to know about their culture because they've been denied it for yes. so long. Yeah. And and you know we were able to bring that in back into their lives, and it's very important to us as well to yeah. be able to offer that. You know, since we have the knowledge, we can and the wisdom, we can transfer it to the young, to the youth, so that they can have a better life. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I and I would try to encourage people, non-indigenous people, to to just learn more and and you know open, get your eyes open, get your mind open, right? Because unfortunately we we learned about first nations people by uh hollywood movies and you know things of that nature that are just so um one side or not so one so one side but trying to make that the white person look so much better so good you know and it's like you have to learn you have to be willing to open your mind and and hear what people say and the only way you're going to learn is to listen to somebody who is that that culture comes from that culture right yes i agree I've been to a, a healing ceremony and it was the most m wonderful moving thing I've ever been uh, been to forever in my whole life that I can think of. And one of the things I was talking to uh, one of the First Nations women there it was the drums. They just go inside you. And she said it's because they refer to them as the mother's heartbeat. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. We can sing you a song if you want. 
Pardon? Do you want us to sing you a song? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> well, this is just give you the idea of, of the drum. So these are like some of the drums that we that we make. I've got swallows on mine. And I've got a flicker. <laughs> <laughs> this one we call the, the lullaby. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it'll kind of take you to some of your when you were a child as, as well as song we hope so if you're listening out there you can maybe close your eyes for this song and see what is brought to you you know the drum reaches you in a different level yeah um, that song when when I had made some drums for my my son and his partner at the time his wife and um, brought, they live in Quebec and we I brought them to New Brunswick where my parents are living and I brought the drum there and I said before giving you the drum I would like to sing to put a song into it because it's all part of it to have to come alive so we started singing that song and we noticed them looking at each other and smiling and then after that and my son said it's interesting that you said it was a lullaby for children because we're pregnant and that was my first granddaughter <clears throat> and then when my daughter-in-law was you know sometimes I would call them and I would sing the song I would you know, we would talk on the phone and I say, put the phone next to your belly. And I would sing a verse of the song and drum and sing a verse of the song. And when I met my my granddaughter for the first time, <clears throat> I was there and she was really, really fussy. So I said, go get your drum. I'll, I'll sing the lullaby to her. And then the minute I started singing, her arms grew wide and she remembered the song. Like, I mean, it was, I started um, drumming and she remembered because... In no time, she stopped crying the minute she heard the song. And then in no time, she had her eyes fell and she fell asleep. It it goes inside you in a deeper, very, very deep level, right. you know, no matter what age you are, even for children. And myself, I'm from the, the prairies originally, from <laughs> Alberta. So, you know, like uh, our ceremonies are like more like the sweat lodge and the sun dance and, uh, and other ceremonies like the healing circles and that. So... So some of the people that come to our drum making workshop, if you think of a salmon going up upstream, all the things they have to go through with all the fishermen and the eagles and the pollution, and only a few make it make it through. And then there's a few few people that I've spotted that come to our workshop that want to learn more. So you know we'll invite them to a sweat lodge, and uh -huh. and some of them have even come to the sun dance with us. I've, I've sun danced for over thirty years. And, the Sundance chief I'm working with now, his name is Ruben George. He's from North Vancouver. And it's a very uh, good Sundance. It's uh, in uh, Lillooet, BC. And we're having it in August. Very so, nice, yeah. And, and, and we deal with all nations, which is, is the beautiful thing about this Sundance and our teachings as well, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of na Native people that are relearning their culture themselves. Uh, the other job I, I do have right now is I'm an elder in the federal prison system. And, and I'd say over half of those men have never even been exposed to their own native culture, you know, because right. 
it had it was hidden and it was shamed for so many years. Yes. So we're coming we're coming out of that. We're, we're coming into a beautiful healing time. There's a, a lot of awareness and a lot of young people now involved in, in the Sundance that I'm with. So it, it's exciting again, you know, to yes, see yeah. the, the next generation coming. I recently found out that my my maternal great grandmother may have been First Nations. I'm trying to I'm trying to get more information, but I haven't been able to to learn more. And and, and I'm thinking about um, since coming out to British Columbia, I haven't been in like I do have an a, I had an auntie who who was First Nations. She passed away last year, but other than her living in in uh, New Brunswick, living in Ontario and Quebec, I didn't come across many people who were First Nations until I moved to BC. And there seemed to be so much here. And I was just wondering, I have such a strong, or I felt such a strong connection for whatever reason. And it's like, okay, maybe it is because I have a maternal great-grandmother who's First Nations, you know? And I'm a person who wants to learn more. <laughs> I really do want to learn more. And I think what you do is so wonderfully fascinating to me. Um, I want to know where you teach and, you know, uh, where your workshops are, how often you do them. I want to know everything. <laughs> right now we're working a lot with the school the school system they've been calling calling us up because they want to teach children about drum making but we do a, we put out we have a website all my relations teachings .ca, okay. and we usually announce what's going on because uh and on four, facebook as well we do four times a year for example we gather at a medicine wheel that we built right in the center of vancouver and, and so that's a good good place if you want to meet us and take part in something so in the spring, summer, fall, and winter, of course, we gather at this medicine wheel that's been created there. Right. It's about 20, 21, 22 years old, no more than that, 23 years old. 25. 25 years old, this medicine wheel. And I put it in there with another elder. She's passed on, and now I, I'm, I'm kind of in, inherited it, put it that way, right. that wheel. So I look after it, and it's a good place to meet to, to get the, some of the basic teachings, and then from there... You know, we, we tell you about other workshops. It's at Landu's and Gardens, and we yeah. meet at every solstices and equinoxes. It's yeah. the closest Sunday to the solstice and the equinoxes. Right. So we always have it at noon on the Sunday, either before or after the solstice, depending on which one's closer. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody, yeah. everybody is welcome to come. And we have nice, last one was we had about 40 people very nice group and it, there was so much healing there were tears and a lot of healing happened at that, that wheel it was really beautiful right so everybody yeah. is invited yeah and then of course we do i do sweat lodge as well but i do that less and less because when i work in the prison system of course i'm running sweats in there all the time so by the time the weekend comes oh I'm yeah a little bit sweated out <laughs> so, uh, but but i do go occasionally and there's a a friend of mine uh, that lives in Surrey, BC, and we look after a sweat lodge together. It's on his property. Him and his wife, they're traditional people, and they're sun dancers with me. And with, when you're involved in something like the sun dance, we just, we call each other brothers and sisters. You know, it's almost, it's like our spiritual family. We have our regular family, but then we have a spiritual family. And Giselle and I have a kind of a habit of adopting people too. We have a We've adopted children. We had an adopted mom. And, uh, Sisters and brothers. Yeah. I'm an orphan. It's often, often, <laughs> oftentimes, if young people are coming to help me, I'll, they'll call right. me uncle, for example, and I'll just say, well, it's okay if I address you as my nephew or my niece. And, and oh, it's, yeah. it's a nice feeling because it, you know, it yeah. seems to have more uh, family yeah. feelings. One of the things I wanted to touch on is like, when you came to my place, I mentioned how I have, uh, I've always seen dogs and cats. I've always seen them. And then rodents, uh, for some reason, there had been some rodents. Then something really, really fascinating happened. I had gone to a Polam Buddhist nunnery here in Chilliwack to interview uh, Venerable Yin Kit. And they have a dog that they've had, well, a rescue dog. She's been with them for, for ages. After the interview, um, they wanted me to take me to their meditation room. And that dog kept not let, allowing me to move forward. And they were shocked because she's never behaved that way. But finally, when we got to the meditation room, she calmed down and everything was great. When I got home, I no longer see the rodents. Oh. oh. <laughs> so I think that's what that dog was doing somehow. Do you think that could be? 
Yeah, so she must have sent something in you because yes. you're so sensitive. Yeah, they're very. She just, yeah, there was something she was trying to block, and you know, and it's just like, wow. And the, yeah. the fact that, yeah, the fact that they said she'd never behave like that with anybody, and they get visitors all the time, you know, and I thought, what is it? You know, what is it I'm doing wrong? <laughs> that was my first thought. But then when I got home and I realized the rodents are gone. So, so every, was a, you know, with our native teachings, we say everything has a spirit. And so that yeah. that's a little different than some of the other isms that are out there. And we are very animistic, you might say that. You right. know, the animals teach us something. Uh, one of the ways I got rid of, rid of, rid of rodents one time was uh, I worked with a man named Rolling Thunder. And there's book, books written about him. And he would say, if an animal presents itself, you talk to the chief of that nation or the king and queen, if you, you can call it as well. And uh, so I remember one place I was living in, there was some mice in it. She said, I'm going to call in a exterminator tomorrow. But she said, I, I don't want to really kill them. She said, is there something you can do? And I said, well, I'll try what I was taught by my grandpa Wallace Black Elk. So, so, you know, you make a little offering of food or something, and then you, you, you pray with it. You say, well, I want to talk to the king and queen of this nation. And I, I had to say, well, you know, tomorrow, if you don't move your family, they're, they're, they're going to bring in these exterminators and and anyway, the mice listened. And I've been in other ceremonies where that's happened, even with mosquitoes, where, you know, you've asked them to lift because you're doing some work and they lift it. And then after the work, they're, they're back on you. Right. So, right. To me, the, the, the mouse though has a message as well, because it, it talks yeah. about being in the present moment. It sees what's right in front of its face. So it, we have uh, some stories. I won't go into the, the long story because it would be too long for your show, but, uh, there's a book called Seven Arrows that was written by a man named Hyam Ho Storm. And he was one of the first native men that started writing. And, and within that book, there's a book, uh, a story about jumping mouse. And that uh, I would suggest you look, look that up because it's about how the mouse starts a certain journey and he, how he, he ends up not only seeing what's right here, but he gets the vision of the eagle. Right. So it's a, it's a good story. And we, when we say animals come into our life or disappear, there is a, there is a meaning and, Right. I think that dog was also, if you don't see rodents, it means that you're stepping into not only seeing what's here, but you're also getting to starting to see the bigger picture like you do with your show. Right. You know, it's so open and you're inclusive. So that's more what you're stepping into, I think. Yeah, I was told before that I, the, by a First Nations uh, elder that um, I've been given, a, a, what the, I forget his exact words, but a partial uh, link and ability to, to be a bridge between yeah. indigenous non-indigenous people and I I didn't know how that you know how to do that or what that meant and he didn't explain further but I'm assuming it's with my show you know yeah. and I, I do hope people do, would just like I, I just think there's no difference in us like we're all either good or bad people or whatever we've been through trauma but the color of a person's skin or their religion should not matter to another person right yeah we all bleed red blood <laughs> yeah exactly it makes no sense to me to, to to say well somebody's lesser than because they're this or they're that it just doesn't make any sense so like how do you get that across to people to get them to hear those words you know i, yeah. I think you start looking at the sameness in things like yeah. you know, we all love family life you know mm -hmm. and we all and the word love goes through through all cultures. You know, there's there's universal things that tie everything together. Yeah. You know, not only words, but you know, culture is important because you know there's cultural teachings that we're I think we're we're here to to learn about. Put it that way. When Phil started teaching long, long, long time ago, even before I met him, uh, he was doing uh, a weekly pipe ceremony or a weekly circle. And, and pipe ceremonies during the full moon and stuff. And um, sometimes there were like 40 years ago, maybe it wasn't as open for right. native people to teach to other non-native, but Phil kept doing it. And sometimes there would be, you know, some criticism or some, you know, the, some elders would say, mm, you shouldn't be doing that. And, but Phil said, it says, my goal in life is to create a bridge between cultures. I need to bring the native culture to everyone. Mm 
Right. And he kept doing it. And later, I mean, now everybody is at that point because they want to put it out in the open because it's such a beautiful culture, such beautiful knowledge to learn mm -hmm. and a good way to walk, you know, when you're doing it right. What mysterious things can happen in a sweat lodge. And so one, one sweat I was in, that was bought right back to my birth time and even before birth where I remember choosing my parents. My dad met my mom in wartime in England. So my dad's Cree and my mom's from England. But I remember actually to a point where I said I wanted a parent from this side of the planet and one from this side. And they have to be different cultures. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I got to, and I got to see that through through a ceremony, you know, a little bit beyond some of the boundaries that we usually we usually travel. So I knew right from very early age that that was part part of my job. And then Nancy, as we were talking, that uh, we discovered our, we were both born on the same day. <laughs> you know, yes, we, I tell people we're twins. <laughs> <laughs> so, twins from different parents, yes. <laughs> yeah, a twin, the one in a different year from different cultures, but I still think we're twins. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And you're you're building that part of the bridge and I'm building part. So yeah. eventually the bridge meets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Yeah, I love that stuff, <laughs> things like that. Uh, another thing I want to ask, mention about is like you talk about prayer and you know, one of the things is, uh, for me anyway, growing up in a Christian religion, we're taught that prayer means praying to God, to the Virgin Mary, or something like that, right? Whereas First Nations interpretation of prayer is not the same thing, which is something that I love, correct? Yeah, yeah it's it's very personal. Like when we when I do a pipe ceremony, you know, I instruct what my elders have taught me. They say it's just between you and the Creator. You know, there's no middle person. And, and quite often in a church, there's a middle person where, you know, yes. I, I remember it as even at an early age, you know, just talking directly to God and, and hearing answers. And I thought that was normal growing up. And, oh, and oh. I learned, oh, no, you're not supposed to do that. You know, to, <laughs> go to a priest or a nun or something. And, yeah. yeah. And so, I, and same with my dad, you know, he said, if anybody asks you, tell him you're French, don't tell him you're native, because he was shamed in residential school. And, yeah. The language was taken away, the culture and that. But now it's coming back, you know, it's it's coming yeah. back very strong. So I've got to see in my lifetime, you know, when I graduated from school, there was point, there was headlines in the Edmonton Journal. I was in Alberta, it said 0.0001% of Native kids make it through the school system. And mm. So in my lifetime, I've seen that change. And Giselle and I even met a, a Native astronaut and I nice. know doctors and lawyers now. And, yeah. and so the education is there. And there's a new wave now, though, I see of militants. Uh, we, used, we used to be called militant because I was in red power days in the 70s. And now they're not using the word militant as often, but I can see more young people standing up for their rights. I yeah. can see multi-billion dollar pipelines being uh, blocked and things like that, where mm. people are saying, well, I'm, we're drawing the line this time, you know, like uh, yeah. we're not when people were put on smaller and smaller reserves that was this it was no different than apartheid that happened in africa people yes. were put on compounds there and on here they were put on reserves and yeah. and uh, we didn't have the population of course of native people to, to to create a total revolution or something but native people are now they're getting educated and they're yeah. saying well, you know we we want our rights back you know and we want some some of the land back and we right and of course the health it's going to be a few generations yet because, it, you know, it's still going to be a lot of addictions and a lot of crime. Yes. For the next two generations. And then it's going to start getting very healthy. You know, And that's what I'm working with. Some of these men that are getting out of that old yeah. lifestyle and changing their lives. And also teaching the youths about yeah. the, that culture so that when they yeah. have kids, children, they can teach it to them them as well and that will you know the generation will follow because they lost it because their parents were it was taken from their parents yeah, tell them about the youth group we do online yeah we have a youth group um pathfinders charity they take young people that are coming out of the foster system right. and they help them with job interviews and things like that and and getting jobs and you know getting out on their own yes and every they Put them through a medicine wheel every time they get a new group we meet them on zoom and we teach, we give them the medicine wheel teaching so that they can know how to you know work from all like you know take care of their body their mind their emotions and, and their spirit and and look after all of that and grow up and, and grow up healthy 
so yeah. important. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to run out of time. I don't want Zoom to cut me off, cut us off in the middle of a talking. But um, what what we'll do is we'll have to be back on the show. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Not that I can tell you what to do, but I think you know there's so much more that uh, I hear, want to hear and learn, and and I'm sure a lot of the viewers feel the same way. Um, so I just want to take this moment to just thank you so much, both of you, for coming on the show. Uh, stay on camera while I say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching the show. You've been listening to Giselle and and Phil, and I'm going to include their uh, their um, how you how you can get in contact with them. Sorry, the, so you can find out when they have their workshops and their teachings and uh, all of those okay. wonderful things that they do. And if Thank anybody you. has any any questions or wants any answers, like they could maybe go through you, and next time we're sitting, they could oh, address some of those questions. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody. And uh, this is being recorded um, close to Easter time, so I just want to say oh, happy Easter for those of you who celebrate. Take care and peace out. A sense of community till the wax a place to be. A sense of community where you're free Rolling through the mountains Rolling through the valley Rolling through paradise with me It's multicultural You're sure to see it all Chilliwax the place to be you'll see Come party in the park Go dancing after dark, chill a wax a place to be, you'll see.